Hey guys, what's going on? It is the 22nd week of my furlough, and barring any weird stuff, it is the last week of my furlough. I get to go back to work next Tuesday, which is all good, and looking forward to that. This week, however, I'm going to take advantage of it. I got three videos I want to do this week. If you remember a couple videos ago that I did, I photographed the Chanel bottle. I did a perfume shot. And I said in that video I had another idea that I wanted to do for perfume, but I was unable to do it because that particular bottle of perfume wasn't full. So I want to do it where the bottle's standing up and I'm looking into it. That's what I'm going to do today. I was going to go out and buy another bottle and give it to my wife when I was done with it. I knew it was expensive. I didn't know it was that expensive. So I ran to the local Marshalls. I don't know if you guys have Marshalls. And I spent a whopping $7.99 on this bottle of perfume. I kind of have an idea what the bottle looks like. It's semi-attractive for the sake of an aesthetically pleasing photograph, but the goal today is to photograph this per bottle of perfume. The reason I'm going to do three videos is I'm kind of taking it as a challenge because I think one of the things that happens with YouTube viewers of all different levels is that we all have different amounts of equipment. So I think it's pretty easy for somebody to say, you know, that's a great shot, I wish I could do that, but I don't have any lighting, or I don't have the right equipment, I don't have the right camera, the right lens, whatever. So I wanna do three series of shots with this photograph. Today I'm gonna to do it with all the equipment I have, all the lighting, anything at my disposal that I have, I'm gonna to use today. Tomorrow's version, I'm just gonna use speed lights. Some people maybe only have speed lights. The next day, I'm not gonna do anything but ambient light only. So if all you have is a camera, that's all I'm gonna use. I'm gonna kind of do the same looking photograph. They'll all have a little bit different twist, obviously. We'll call it a product photography challenge based on the equipment that you have. And in the next three days, we're gonna come up with three, hopefully amazing results. So I need to get the product set going. And yeah, it's gonna be great. Thanks for watching, guys. Let's do this. So typically what I would do when I do a product shoot is I would first kind of lay it out, sketch it out, whatever I'm gonna do, and then I'm gonna light it. Now today I have that benefit because I'm gonna bring in the lighting. It's all gonna be artificial lighting. I can do whatever I want. I can get everything set up and then light it. When I get to the ambient version of this shot, I'm gonna have to think about lighting before I set it up because I'm gonna have to set it up in a place that you know, good light is coming through a window or whatever. Today, I don't care about any of that. So I'm starting to set things up, get the camera out, get everything on it, and then I'll light it. Now, as far as the background, I'm going to go with this uh, checkerboard marble thing I've got again. I've got a black piece of paper in the background. I'm just going to let that go dark. Probably put some kind of light back there to give it some separation. Typically when it comes to product photography, I use the longest lens I can get away with. In my case, the longest lens I have is a 200, so I'm going to use that. But if you do not have a lens similar to that, my suggestion, use the longest one you have. If it's an 85, if it's a 50, whatever the case may be, I would use the longest lens you have. Mostly that's because we don't want a lot of distortion or bent lines or anything like that. We want nice, clean, straightforward for a product and we want less compression is that the word i'm looking for yeah we just we just want clean we want we want to compress the background the other thing a long lens will let you do is it will not like veer way off like that my background is only so wide and if i use a wide angle lens and i zoom you know i come in close to my product the angle of view is going to go like this and i'm going to see right off my background so a, a more telephoto lens is going to have a angle of view like that and keep me on that background. So several reasons to use that uh, longer lens. Mine happens to be a 70 to 200 F4. Uh, I certainly am not gonna shoot this thing wide open. I know a lot of professional photographers like to say that, well, I know a lot of YouTubers like to say that professional photography is always shot wide open with lots of bokeh and shallow depth of field. That's baloney, that's not true. Not that shooting wide open is bad, but it doesn't make it more professional. We'll probably be at 8, 11, 16, somewhere in that range today. We'll see where we land. But I'm going to want to carry that depth of field. And we're going to get dimension based on our lighting, not on our 
how far out the background is out of focus. So I'm going to set this thing up, get a camera on it, then we'll tackle the lighting. One of the things I may need to do is take that little stem out of there. Can you see that little pump? Because it's a... You may need to take that out. The other thing I'm going to have to be very careful of is there's a lot of reflections going on here, and we need to control those reflections with some lighting and some fill cards and stuff. But I also don't want any of the ambient, like the windows, reflecting in it. Now, I'm not sure that the strobes will overtake that. If it doesn't, we're going to have to card it off or something. Um, but this is the basic shot. Black background, marble front. Let's get some lighting going. Okay, so here's my initial setup. One light with just a parabolic and a diffusion uh, material over it, lighting the top. I've got a softbox on the right, fill card on the left, and in the back, I've got a light with a grid spot lighting up the background. I usually turn the grid spot modeling light off because if you leave it on, it gets very, very hot, which obviously is a bad thing. Now, a couple of things in my initial image that I will show you here. One of the things I don't like, I don't love the reflection in the top that's coming off that parabolic. The reflections on the side are a little too clean for me. I wish there was a little more wrap around or some dimension there, so we'll work on that. The light on the background is a little less than dramatic for me. It's just kind of there. And overall, the whole thing is leaning to one side. I think it's close. I don't hate it, but at the same time, there's a lot of improvement that could be done, so I'm going to actually switch some lighting around and we'll go for version 2 here in just a second. Okay, so here's my changes. I moved the softbox to the top. I put a grid spot over on this side, and then I simply hung a piece of parchment paper there. Now, you can certainly buy photographic diffusion paper, and I have some, but what I have is not big enough, and it's old and kind of wrinkly and messed up, and you know, I need something smooth that's gonna create a nice reflection in this side. I went down to a smaller fill card on this side, but the reflections I like better. Now, and I definitely like the reflection in the top coming off the softbox better. Haven't really messed with the background light. I may mess with that a little bit, but one couple last things I think I do for, need to do for the bottle. I think I need a white card behind. Let me just put this back here just to test to see if the bottle doesn't pop a little bit better. Yeah, see, I. I think that looks a whole lot better when it lights up like that. So we'll cut a piece of paper back there to make that pop a little bit. And then again, I still think I need to pull that stem out of there. I don't know why that makes me nervous to try to pull the bottle apart and do that. But let's get that piece of paper cut first. Let me show you some adjustments here. I actually moved this closer to the background, aimed it down a little bit. I just want a hot spot gradiating off a little bit faster than what I've already got. There's what that looks like from the back. I just got a little gizmo that I have that props up that white card. Let me turn the uh, modeling light off here because, like I said, that's going to get super hot. Now, putting that card behind the perfume bottle to light up the inside actually made the softbox on top overexposed. I've already turned it down two stops. I'm actually gonna bump this down to F11. That's pretty close. Let's take that in the computer and see where we're at. Okay, I think that's really close and I'm gonna have to do a little bit of retouching, which if you know me, 
well enough. You know I like to get it as close in camera as possible, but you see this thing that's reflecting right there that like almost looks like an orange line. To be honest with you, I, I can't figure out what it is. So we may have to do that in post. I am gonna try to pull that stem out of there. I'm gonna do that last in case I screw it up. One other thing, and I can't believe I'm even thinking about doing this, but we may try. I'm gonna go to the 1980 gels. A nice amber gel. Let me get some tape. Okay, can't believe I just did that, but let's give it a try. Yeah, okay, no, good. Not gonna go with the gel. Two points of risk when it comes to trying to pull that stem out of there. Number one, if I mess up the bottle, I screw up the next two days shots. And I really don't wanna do that. I'd have to go buy another one. The other thing is if this stuff smells horrible, I can make the whole place smell bad. That's why I'm not in the studio anymore. I'm in another part of the house to try to attempt this. So here we go. I think I'm gonna live with it. We'll see what we can do in Photoshop maybe to get that stem out of there. I don't wanna break it. All right, guys, here's the version, uh, I think in its final form, other than post-processing. I gotta take out that reflection that I told you about that I wasn't quite sure where it was coming from. Unfortunately, when you have something that's chrome and round like that, it's gonna see everything in the studio. And that's difficult to control sometimes. And I could have fought with it and created a tent and done all kinds of crazy stuff, but I think it'll be pretty simple to just take care of that in Photoshop. I don't mean to use Photoshop as a crutch, but in this case, I think it's gonna work. I wanna clean up the little white sections in the corner where I probably didn't cut my card perfectly. If you look at my card that I put behind it, probably should have been a little rounder to be a little more precise. Uh, again, probably an easy cleanup in Photoshop. And then I'm gonna attempt to take out the stem and a little bit of dust and little imperfections in the bottle will clean all that up. And it should look fantastic. If you have any comments, questions, anything about how I did it, how I lit things, if you got questions about that, please let me know. I'm gonna do the Photoshop retouching and then I will show you the final version of day one of this little product photography challenge, if you will. Tomorrow we're gonna do speed lights only and I own two speed lights. So that'll be a little bit of a challenge because I have three lights set up on this set. We're gonna do the same thing or close to it with only two lights. And then the following day is ambient light only, which will be definitely a challenge. If you stuck around this long, I greatly appreciate it. Subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you can, like the video if you like it. I appreciate that as always. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. One quick thing before I do that retouching and finish this thing off. If the sun is shining this week, I'm gonna be at the pool. Last week of furlough, I gotta take advantage of it.